Hey, thanks for joining us today on our Plant Talk Radio podcast. I'm Mark Noose, and we're here, of course, with the host of Plant Talk Radio, Fred Howard, the Ohio nurseryman. And we also have Pat Arnold here, who uh, today is here to talk about the Bonide line of products. And, uh, Fred, I know that, uh, you know, you and I talk a lot about Bonide products each week we on do. the program. They've been uh, one of our sponsors for many years, and they have a long line of products. And I know you have a lot of questions for Pat. Well, I do, and, and more than we can handle in the next seven days. But at the same time, let's get to a couple things. <laughs> right. Number one, I have faith in a company that is uh, 90 years old and, and still, let's just say, growing and learning and doing a better job. And by that meaning research and things, I don't keep up daily by any means. Matter of fact, sometimes not even yearly. But the companies do. And they're looking for something more and better for our clients, our listeners, and so on all the time. And right now, in terms of one of the things that they're they're working with, and I invite somebody to come and use it in my yard, weed beater, weed beater extra, etc. cetera. Um, they're... I've never seen so many weeds in my yard. Oh, it's a big year for weeds, Fred. It's a big year for weeds. It yeah. was an easy winter. The seeds all germinated, oh, and I think, away it goes. I think last germinated last fall, and they just roots got deeper and deeper. The ground mm-hmm. didn't freeze, and then when the warm weather came, they just <laughs> popped out of the grass. Popped out of the grass, popped out of the, the be- mulched beds yeah. around the trees. I mean, you name yeah. it. But right now, that, the bed, of course, is high on my mind mm-hmm. in terms of uh, disgust with my own yard. But then uh, your company uh, is... Dealing with all American-made things, and mm-hmm. you, your people are always out looking in, in areas as to what the needs are. And I don't mean the, the Columbus market or Cleveland market, but the eastern market, the southeastern market, right. uh, clear to the river, uh, yeah, clear to the Mississippi, and so on. And those things then break down within your, uh, well, let's just say your company's range of products so that everybody can get a handle on something that will do a job for them. Right, and weeds. It, are, are weeds are, you know, weeds right now. You know, because of the, of the of a mild winter. You know, our one of the unique about our products, at least the one that the weed beater you mentioned, weed beater mm-hmm. ultra, ultra, which is a a cool season weed killer. It works when the air temperature is forty five degrees, and the ground temperature can be even colder than that. You know, we're going to have a couple nights here that are going to be quite cold mm-hmm. here in uh, the first uh, week of uh, May. Here, I'm talking some uh, forty degree nights, so that. Um, this work weed cover works extremely well. You can spray it on. The weeds will will, will actually start collapsing within 24 hours. Mm-hmm. You can reseed in two weeks. Um, and virtually it covers 250 different variety of weeds, from dandelions right through creeping charlie to thistle. It, it's a great product. How about chickweed? <laughs> chickweed, fine, too. Absolutely. Chickweed is my nemesis. And it won't, it won't harm grass. And that's, that's, and that's, that's the, the key. That's one of the things I'm glad you mentioned because, uh, well, the plant world is divided into two different categories. And uh, your company and some others have divided that chemically into what will kill when you mix it into this or that. And uh, you folks always have the answer on what you can use that will do the job you want done and not kill the next thing. Right. We have uh, – and we color code our products, too. I don't know if there are green products mm-hmm. on the shelf. They're – there are our grass control products or our weed products. Uh, the reds, insecticides, oranges, fungicides, yellow is repellents, uh, black is a household insect control. So our line is pretty much color coordinated. If you look in some of our retail stores, you'll see that. And if they don't have them ribbon by color, they'll have them ribbon by section, you know, so which um, some of the people uh, go in the store, they, they like to see that because they mm-hmm. don't get the wrong product for the wrong use. Well, when when you talk about the wrong product, wrong use, uh, I'm always trying to learn something. And and you have a weed beater FE. What, oh yeah, what is that one? Brand new this year. Weed ah. beater FE is an organic weed killer, a high dose of iron, uh, which actually kills all the broadleaf weeds in a lawn without harming the turf grasses. It turns them a little bit green because iron is absorbed by the, the grasses, but it won't kill it. Green's so, okay in my lawn. Yeah. <laughs> people and, you know, people and pets safe, not that our other chemicals are not. Mm-hmm. It's just that this has no chemistry to, and this just because it overdoses the uh, weed with iron, it won't survive. Mm-hmm. So people like this um, for various reasons. And uh, we brought it out this year, and it should be a very. Um, so far, the response has been um, phenomenal, really. Well, that's good. And I like that business of greening up because, um, well, I had an experience one time. A little, little fellow I was trying to te- well, a class that I was trying to teach. Mm-hmm. He stood up and said, Mr. Hauer, mm-hmm. 
Is it true that the iron molecule is the center of the chlorophyll process? I answered him yes and moved on so fast. <laughs> he just frightened yeah. me to death. But yeah. the point is yeah. that you're using a natural element, mm. yeah. and most of, well, not most, i got to be careful there, but a great deal of Ohio is uh, all calcium and, and uh, dolomite and limestone and so on. Mm-hmm. All these things can handle and appreciate some extra iron. So, like I say, in my lawn, a little extra green isn't going to hurt anything. Never going to hurt at all like that. Yeah, Bono has been, you know, sensitive to the consumer's <clears throat> needs the last couple of years, and we've come out with a whole natural or organic collection Good. of our product lines. Uh, some are under the, we use the USDA logo uh, for organic gardening only on a lot of our packaging, as well as our tan label on all our natural products are noted, you know, okay. on, on the label. And um, so we're sensitive. There are people who okay. just want to put something uh, either a insecticide, fungicide, or a weed killer, or a repellent, more of a natural, made by natural products, or organic, we have the answer um, in our product line for them. Now, if I understood, and, and I, <laughs> I have to be a little careful of color coding because of my abilities, but it is a factor then that, if I understood you, tan indicates natural products. Natural or organic. Uh, or organic, organic yes. right. Yeah. Mean from, made from natural products which actually are in nature may not be organic because maybe the uh, the agent the uh, wedding agent you have in a product to stick on the leaves mm-hmm. may not be organic mm-hmm. but it is come from a natural product mm-hmm. um, the other ones that have been cleared for the, from the organic USDA are considered organic they'll have a little for organic gardening logo on the package well I I have to be careful because I can't retain everything. But at the same time, with the coloring labels, mm-hmm. with the natural materials and so on, and your company's overall sensitivity to that, mm-hmm. uh, it takes me to a question I was asked just last weekend at the garden center about insect killing this, that, or the next thing. And the lady was quite concerned. She had three small children with her okay. about this, that, and the next thing, which I automatically then, at, at least in a short conversation, recommended she check the label on some soap materials. Oh, yeah. Just plain old SOAP. Sectocidal soaps. Right. Um, they, uh, you spray them on a plant. Uh, they, la- they actually coat the insect, dissolves mm-hmm. the cuticle or the outside shell of the insect, and he basically checks out. <laughs> um, and now it does... <laughs> Nicely put. Yeah, it doesn't, nice, it doesn't really... It doesn't last very long mm-hmm. because the sun breaks it down and you have to reapply it fairly often, about every seven days if you have infestation of mm-hmm. aphids or some mealybug or anything else mm-hmm. like that. But we have a, there's oils out there, all season oils, which actually can coat the eggs, the larvae, and the insects, and you can apply that every um, every two uh, every seven to ten days as well. That does a great job mm-hmm. also. And there's a new one out we had a couple years ago called Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew, and that's it's a it's a uh, organic insecticide that actually the insect takes it through its body by eating it, and they stop feeding, mm-hmm. and they just. Mm-hmm. Don't feed, and they don't last very long. That's right. And and to those of you who have taken a little bit of uh, education on that, it stops the instars. Yes. Yeah, I'm not going to try to explain that because it would <laughs> take right, three hours. <laughs> but, it, yes, uh, and I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, where I have no real problem in personally with systemics, I'm glad to know that there are what I call topicals. And the only thing I would like to add you say that these products do a good job, and I don't doubt that for a moment. However, you have to be much more careful to spray the plant up under the leaves, down in little axles of the of the stems, of the leaf joints. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to run or go to the point of drip off so that you're sure you cover the rascal because it isn't picked up by uh, their feet walking on it X days later. It's something you have to put on them, and then then the product takes over, and uh, like you say, they just disappear. Right, absolutely. And the dust, we have dust in Captain Jack's, and there's, the dust have uh, become more popular, mm-hmm. too, because they do have a charge on them, and they will cling underneath the leaf of the plant, mm-hmm. and you'll get middle bit coverage. But most of the consumers, as you say, want to spray it on and be done with it. And you have to be um, make sure you get the full plant so the insect uh, mm-hmm. usually hide sometimes under the leaf, as you know. Yeah. I have been asked three times in the last week, 
and this might take more time than we have, but uh, carpenter bees are becoming a really nasty problem around a lot of structures. Mm -hmm. I was at a home (laughs) in the last two weeks where it is uh, all raw wood. It was intended to be that way. It's Mm. it's, uh, coloring out beautifully, but the carpenter bees are just having a ball. Uh, They are using a bird net, a, a... ping pong paddle when they're in close <laughs> they're using a badminton racket the score on the door literally on the door hash marked was 110 the other day when i looked now i don't know whether that was for the day or the week but uh is there something in your product line uh because i've been asked many times and i'm not quite certain that will help at least help with the carpenter bees yeah we have a termite and carpenter ant control mm-hmm. which we have a concentrate um, and also have it in an aerosol we have it in a ready to use as well. The key on carpenter bees, you certainly, um, as they go back to the same hole every year, mm-hmm. they hatch out and they go back. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have, we have a little aerosol with a snorkel tube. You can spray in these holes if you find out where they are. It lasts for a period of four months. And, um, and if they go back in there, they get on their little fur and then they check out. Mm-hmm. They can't re- yeah. re- like that. So, that we use that we have a, a dust as well okay a dust you can puff like a duster in that and then it will stay active for a period of um, uh, nine months actually because okay. the chemistry the, du- the dust in itself is not a it's impervious to water mm-hmm. so the active ingredient stays active for that long fantastic the key is um they're a they're a tough little <laughs> they are they take care of they are but if you're able to seal up the holes, people will spray them. They'll seal them up with, with um, even with uh, steel wool and things like that. And they try to go back in there. Um, some will go back and re, re-chew on it, or some will just go away. Or move an inch over. That can happen. Yeah, I, that happens in my place. And it's that's part of the reason I ask. It's so I can help the clients, but it's also... Um, I've got some open lumber, too, and it's just driving me nuts. And and they'll come right down and stare at you right between the eyes, the males getting ready to fight for their territory and so on. So in a sense, it's kind of interesting, and in a sense, it's quite destructive. Glad you have a product. Uh, where can people find out more about the entire Bonide product? Well, Bonide got a great website. Consumer website is bonide.com, B-O-N-I-D-E.com. We have a whole list of information on there on, uh, you know, certainly tech sheets uh, on our products, uh, how to grow vegetable gardens, fruit fruit care. Um, also, we have a lot of uh, good tech information uh, for the consumer to answer products. We also have an app. If okay. people want to look at, they can download our app call, on, on our app store called Bonai.com. It is a great diagnostic tool. has all the images of insects, disease, uh, critters, uh, as well as weeds on it. And you can diagnose where you could, what product in a bonded okay. line take care of that problem, plus find a product um, at your local uh, garden store because it'll have a dealer locator tied Excellent. in with that. Excellent. I can only say thanks, Pat. You're uh, welcome. I, I, <laughs> it's just, it's an education in itself. Each time we talk about a product or a product line, or uh, what'd you say, two hundred and some SKUs, uh, seven hundred and fifty SKUs. So, oh, I misunderstood that. But any of that, it keeps probably, adding. They add, uh, yeah. I think they add at least a dozen every year, and they don't drop anything. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Hey, thanks, uh, Pat. Thanks again for being here today. We really appreciate it. For Fred Hauer, the Ohio Nurseryman, I'm Mark Noose. Thanks for listening today, and we hope you check out our other Plant Talk Radio podcast. And join us each Saturday morning at 8 a.m. for Plant Talk Radio.